here with another video. Uh, this is the official truck tour. Before we jump into this video, make sure to give me that thumbs up, smack that subscribe button, and let's rock. <laughs> So I'm back down here by my truck. I wanted to come up over here to Prime uh, to see the update on my truck. As you guys can see, we put the hydraulic pump on the back and this is the eco heater box. All right, let's get up in here and take a look. Oh, wow. All right, I just turned on my, turned on my flashers here. Now, I did not get the digital dash now my Peterbilt did have the digital dash. Here we got the steering wheel controls here on the freight, freight liner. Some people call it a freight shaker. I'll turn those uh, uh, flashers off. So it's got a little pin code box versus a digital scroll, which I like these better. All right, let's hit the dome light. Uh, there's the dome light up here for the front of the truck. No, I don't want to do a light test, hit the wrong button. Dome, now it went back off here. Now these trucks come with a 15, 1500 watt inverter behind the passenger seat. And it looks like we got a little bit of storage compartment. Can't really see it here, but, and I do need to get my uh, CB radio for in here. So a little bit of storage up here, up on the top passenger side, that's the front. Up here over here by the driver's side. And it does have curtains that go cover the whole front of the truck. Just like the Peterbilt I had. Uh, this, this storage compartment right here uh, is for a microwave. Uh, I recommend just getting a 700 watt microwave. I mean, you could put something bigger in here if you wanted to, but you might start having issues um, if you have too much stuff uh, plugged into that 1500 watt power inverter down there. So I never had any issues running a 700 watt with other things plugged in, so uh, that's what I've been sticking with. So I do recommend, uh, I only paid like 50 bucks for my microwave at Walmart. All right, so this, this is actually the top bunk here. Well, they haven't put any mattresses in here yet, but uh, this is the, the top bunk. Let me see if I can get some lights in here. Uh, so this is the back control panel. When you're, when you're sitting here on the back of the bed, like I said, there's no mattress here yet. Uh, that's uh, the window here uh, on the bottom bunk. That's your view on the driver's side. And if we just turn around, this is me sitting down on the back of the bunk and on the right side I have a window too it has a curtain on there but I'll take it off a little bit later maybe I should actually take it off now so I get a little sunlight in here okay that actually is better so so this is the the bottom view now this bottom space here is going to be for a fridge so you're on the when you're sitting down looking at the front on the right side is where your microwave I'm sorry, your, your fridge will be down here and your microwave goes above there. So I do like that setup. And over here to the left, let me scoot back a little bit so y'all get a better view. So it looks like there's some cabinet space up here. Uh, it looks like here's a cabinet here to put, you know, put things in. Not super big, but, and it looks like there's another small storage cabinet down here. And the fire extinguisher is behind the driver's seat okay so when i push the sleeper button the back ones come on so got two light three lights total one for the front all right let me turn those off so dome light is for the front and i'm going to push the sleeper one now so that one went out so there's some lighting back here and looks like we got some speakers i haven't checked out the sound system in here yet but I already know it's not gonna to compare to the Peterbilt 579 I was in. So it looks like there's another light up here uh, for your top bunk buddy if you get one. All right, there. Yeah, it's pretty neat. It's directional, so you can move it around. So, got a little light up here. And that's the top little storage cabinet space. And there's another top storage cabinet space above the, the microwave. All right, let's go ahead and close this up. So. I'm going to be rolling with this probably closed. So it's not as spacious as my Peterbilt 579. But I didn't get it for the smoothness of the ride. 
I know a lot of people are saying that this is, uh, you know, that's why they call them a freight shaker because they, they ride rough. But I drove one of these in TNT and I drove a Peterbilt 579. And I personally like the mid-roof freight liners. Well, I got to talk to them now. Let's take a look and let's open up the bottom here. So this is the, this right here is the, the bottom bunk. So let's go ahead and open this here. All right, so we'll push it to the right and it opens up. So it looks like there's some storage space down here. And I'll be filling up most of this stuff here. Now here on the, this would be the driver's side of the truck. It has a little uh, a door for storage compartment. This is where I'm gonna keep all my tanker tools and stuff. So let's look for that. Let's look for that button here. I think, I think right here, I think this pull handle, hang on a second here. I think this pull handle down here by the driver's side is uh, for that little, let's pull it. And let's go out here. This side door should have popped open. Yep. So this is for the side door. This is where I'm gonna keep my, all my all my taker tools and everything that I need. So it's, it's not bad. And these are my three red reflective triangles. All of them coming with the truck. So three red reflective triangles I'll keep down there. Oh nice, so they got uh, a little light in here, which is nice. Uh, my Peterbilt didn't have that, that's a nice LED light. And that is for your APU hours. It says it's got 10 because they got to test it. So, and I had my uh, APU running earlier before I started the truck to make sure it was working. So yeah, that's a nice little cabinet space. And that's the window here. I'm on the driver's side of the truck. And it's got sturdy steps here. Always grab handles if you're going to get on the top, if you're going to get on the, on the catwalk. So, but yeah, the last time that they didn't have the eco heater box. This is to run the intrinsic heat to keep your load warm on the tanker side. I don't use it very often. I only used it twice, I think, last winter. All right, let's get down here. Woo! All right. So we got uh, my lights. Lights are working. Let me, uh, let me press this. Oh, hit my flashers here. And just do another quick check around here. Make sure everything's working. All right, so my lights, lights are working. Working. It's kind of hard to see, but those are working. I do like those lights. The LED lights are pretty slick. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, those are slick. I like that. I like that a lot. All right, so the next thing that I have to do is I got to hook up. I came down here to basically check to see if they put the eco heater box on the back and also see if they put the hydraulic pump on which I need to pump off the tankers uh, whenever I go to uh, a 90 which is a receiver to pump off I need my hydraulic pump it looks like both of them are on I have not tested them yet tomorrow I plan on doing my actual truck inspection that means I have to actually go to success leasing's office and I'll get a I mean, it's a stack of papers. I mean, it's it, it's a lot. But I basically had to go through, do a full checklist on the truck to let them know if there's anything wrong with it. So that I'll actually be doing tomorrow. Like I said, I just wanted to come up here to make sure that the hydraulic pump was put on and the eco heater was put on. And then while I'm here, I'm actually gonna be hooking up my, uh, my Sirius XM to this truck. Uh, Cause right now it's actually still hooked up to my Peterbilt. So, uh, but that's what I'm actually gonna do now. But I really hope uh, that you enjoyed uh, the actual, you know, me giving you a, a tour of the truck. Now it doesn't have uh, the mattresses in it. I got to get a fridge and all my things are at home right now. Uh, one of the things that I do actually recommend if you are going to be switching trucks or if you're getting into a truck and you got a lot of things, what I did is my wife and I, uh, whenever I got out of my old truck and did the lease cancellation, I actually went to Walmart, uh, my wife and I, and we got a bunch of clear totes so i put all my thing in clear totes and i probably spent i don't know maybe 60 or 80 bucks in totes uh, but it's going to make it a lot easier for me whenever i have to switch trucks i mean if you are switching trucks the same the same day and they're right next to each other then you won't really need totes but since i actually took all my stuff home uh totes was a good investment so that way i don't look like 
I just got kicked out of the house and have a bunch of trash bags and stuff like that. So uh, that's one of the things that I, I do recommend. Uh, another thing that I wanted to actually talk about was, you know, a lot of people are asking why I switched from a Peterbilt 579 Ultraloft to this mid-roof Freightliner, or as they call a freight shaker. Now, I actually drove both uh, a mid-roof Freightliner during my TNT, and I also drove the Peterbilt 579 Ultraloft. Now, the Peterbilt, hands down, the ride, smooth, rides amazing. And so if you're looking for smoothness of ride, comfort, and you want all the gadgets on the inside, absolutely go with the Peterbilt. My personal experience with the Peterbilt 579, when I first signed the lease to my truck, the first four months, I really wasn't making any money because I was looking good on the side of the road because I was broke down. So when I, it only had 13,000 miles when I signed the lease on the Peterbilt. The engine blew. Uh, two weeks after that, the turbo went, went out of it completely. And the other thing with the Peterbilts, if you're, if you're gonna lease a truck, and let's just say you do pick a Peterbilt, and I'm not discouraging you from getting a Peterbilt, I'm letting you know right now, they ride amazing. They got everything inside. I mean, them things are loaded. I love them. I didn't love how much I was broken down. And if your Peterbilt breaks down, only Peterbilt can touch it. Prime will not touch it because of voiding warranties and things like that. So anytime that my truck broke down, it had to get either towed to a Peterbilt shop or one time I was broke down here whenever I got to the yard, I had to wait two days for a mobile, a mobile mechanic from Peterbilt to come to the prime yard to even take a look at it. So the motor getting blown, the turbo basically getting shot completely, and this is all before 30,000 miles. Uh, the passenger LED headlight went out, the electrical wiring needed to be replaced under the, the, the engine, and four times my digital dash on my uh, Peterbilt froze while I was driving. So I couldn't, didn't know how fast I was going, didn't know how, how, how much uh, fuel I had, like everything completely froze on it. And that happened to me four times while I'm driving. So I'm not trying to discourage you from getting a, um, getting a Peterbilt 579 Ultraloft, wonderful trucks. They look good on the inside. I mean, comfortable ride, comfortable ride. I love them. But my personal experience with it is I was having a lot of issues my first four months in that Peterbilt. Now, like I said, I drove a mid-roof Freightliner as well during my TNT training phase with Prime. And yeah, it, it rides, they ride a little bit rough, but I, I'm not here to look good on the side of the road. Like, I, I'm okay with a little bit of a bumpy ride. That doesn't bother me. And also I went with a mid-roof because some of the shippers and receivers that I go to on the tanker side, they actually require you to have a mid-roof to get in and out of places. So uh, that is another reason. Yeah, I could have ordered a Peterbilt 579 uh, mid-roof, but because of all the issues I had in my personal experience with it, and because I drove a mid-roof Freightliner, I personally like the mid-roof Freightliners because uh, one, I think that they climb hills better. Two, the Jake brakes work better in my opinion. Three, it gets better fuel mileage and four I could go under lower bridges so and I could go anywhere if there is an issue with this truck uh, I could take it to any shop within the prime network so I don't just have to take it directly to a Freightliner dealership or have a Freightliner mechanic look at it uh, pretty much any shop can take a look at these Freightliners so who knows maybe I made you know the wrong choice I don't know uh, you know I created this channel to Show, show, you know, show you all my journey in trucking. Uh, I never think that, uh, I never think that I know everything. I, I don't always think that I'm right. So this is just me, me learning and me sharing my experiences with you and and learn from my mistakes. I, I am not perfect. I'm still learning. But a lot of people also want to say that leasing is a scam. Well, in my opinion, I don't think so because. Right now, currently, I'm on average, so at the end of 2022, if my averages stay the same, I'm gonna make over $100,000 net. That's after all my expenses, all my maintenance, repairs, uh, permits, truck payment, insurance, fuel, everything. So if you wanna say that, 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 that Prime's a scam, you know, go ahead. I do believe that Prime does nickel and dime their drivers as far as when you come to their repair shops because in my Peterbilt 579, at 100,000 miles, I had to replace the air filter. Prime wanted $320 for the Prime shop here in Springfield, $320 to replace an air engine air filter. It took me five minutes. So I did save 320 bucks. So there is ways that you can save money and that's what I'm always trying to do. Like I said, I don't think I'm perfect. I don't think that I'm always right. I make mistakes. 
I do own up to my mistakes, but I'm gonna keep on trucking. Trucking ain't for everybody, it is tough, but I do love it. So, I mean, it is what it is. I wanted to show y'all my trucking journey, uh, you know, show you the, the, the ins and the outs, uh, the POV behind the scenes of trucking, what it's actually like to be a truck driver. Uh, and I wanted to share my life and my experience with y'all. And then that way, maybe you see everything that I do and you're like, man, that, you know, that actually does look good or that, that, that does, that does look fun. But I'm also not going to just show you the good. I'm going to show you the bad, the ugly. I should show you all the trailer issues that I have. So if you, if you, if you like hanging out with me, uh, you like, you like my channel, you know, make sure to give me that thumbs up and smack that subscribe button and let's keep rocking y'all.